Germania is arguably the most important and most mysterious character in Rammstein's Deutschland video. She's the red thread that connects all the different scenes from German history, and she seems to bring destruction wherever she appears. The problem is Germania has never actually existed as a real human being. She only entered German literature and art during the Middle Ages and became more significant during German Romanticism, where she became a kind of Madonna-like figure. In Rammstein's video, we see Germania as the killer of Arminius, as a warrior princess, as a Nazi as Escard, as a member of the East German Communist Politburo, as Josephine Baker, as the nurturing mother of the Germans, the German Catholics, as Snow White in space, as a prostitute, and as the Virgin Mary. So although Germania is utterly fictional and a marginal and nearly irrelevant figure in the cultural history of Germany, for some reason she plays a pivotal role in Rammstein's Deutschland. So the question is, who is Germania? Welcome everybody to this new video. Today I'm going to talk about Germania. In Rammstein's video, Germania is the main figure. She appears in almost every scene and she seems to be kind of evil. Destruction follows wherever she goes. Now, she is an utterly fictitious character. She never existed, but for some reason she plays a major role in the music video. And the scenes in which she appears are mostly not historically accurate, but just revisiting some historical events. So Germania became popular during the Middle Ages and she became really, really worshipped during German Romanticism post-1806. One, this is because in 1806, Napoleon basically annihilated the Holy Roman Empire of German nations. And Germania was seen as a potential savior to bring back the Holy Roman Empire in its full glory. Now from 1871 to 1918, Germania worship reached a new height. She became really popular and was depicted more like a belligerent kind of Virgin Mary. But after the First World War, Germania worship just kind of stopped. So she lost all her popularity during the Weimar Republic and that was basically it for Germania. But in Rammstein's video, she's almost in every single scene and basically plays a very important role. Now here are some illustrations. So this is kind of like uh, Germania's evolution over the centuries. The first illustration is Germania, the woman, the warrior goddess from 1010. And we can see her there. She's also like almost a savior-like figure, almost like the Virgin Mary. And this depiction is from 1834 or 1836, that kind of like time frame. And she's resting under a tree, holding a shield and a sword, probably just taking a rest to strike again against the enemies of Germany. And this one is from 1848, and she is sitting on a throne, basically. And from the same year, 1848, Germania, and this painting is in the Palskirche in Frankfurt, and she is holding the German flag. Again, she is holding a sword, ready to strike at any time. In this painting, she looks kind of like heroic. And then 1860, Germania wacht am Rhein, so she's keeping watch at the Rhine River, and I'm pretty sure she is looking towards France, just to make sure Germany is not attacked again. 1914, when the First World War broke out, so this is August 1914, so German is kind of depicted as this blonde, fierce-looking warrior goddess, like a knight. She's wearing a crown and a shield with a German eagle on it. And then 1883 again, so this is very important, this is Germania sitting again on a throne, and she is holding a crown in her hand. Uh, that's a very significant image, because in Rammstein, Germania is holding the head of Armenius in her hand, and she's also having a sword next to her. Now, in Rammstein's video, Germania is more than just a representation of Germany. She's basically the embodiment of a universal principle, and I go into more detail in a minute. Germania shows up in almost every single scene of the video, so she's like the central figure of the video. And, of course, in that case, she also ties together all the different scenes from the video. She's the red thread, and in the video we see all these laser beams always, and it's kind of like the scenes are interconnected through this laser beam and through Germania. She's basically weaving these scenes together with this thread of that laser beam. In a way, like we see in the first scene, Germania is also like this kind of strange alien kind of figure because she seems to come from outer space like a meteorite. So this is very obvious in the first scene because there we can see the island where she decapitates Arminius and it looks like there's like it's a laser trail that's still left there from when she hit the earth. 
from outer space. So it's very interesting because like the first scene where we actually see Germania, he is decapitating Arminius, Arminius the great Germanic hero who defeated the Romans. But in that video, he is not defeating the Romans. He is basically the victim of Germania and she in turn defeats the Romans. So this is a reenaction of this illustration. It's from 1813 and it's very significant for German history because it's called Hermann befreit Germania. Hermann is Arminius, okay, and he frees Germania. So he unties her in this image and underneath Germania it says Germania Leipzig 1813. Why Leipzig 1813? This is a very significant historical date because in 1813 Germany and its allies defeated Napoleon in Leipzig. It's the Battle of Leipzig, the Völkerschlacht. So the battle went on from 1813, October 16th to 19th. So it's the liberation wars against Napoleon. At that time, it was the biggest battle in world history and it involved 560,000 soldiers. And in the end, it was a glorious victory for Germany and Napoleon was defeated there. So Rammstein's video turns this glorious scene of the German victory and the freeing, the liberation of Germania into its kind of reversal. She now becomes a killer who decapitates the proto-hero of German history. So, and what happens is, so she's like crouching over him and she's cutting off his head. And it happens in 16 AD. So 16 AD was supposedly the date when Arminius died actually. But when he defeated the Romans was actually in the year 9 AD. So they're playing here with historical events and the historical dates a little bit. And Germani decapitates him. So we can see this right here. She's basically leaning over uh, Arminius and she's severing his head with a knife. And we can see here, she's holding the head up and she's having a knife in her hand. Hand. So we had this pose like uh, on this one photograph I just showed, Germania sitting on a throne holding up a crown and holding a sword in her hand basically. So now here it's a knife and she's not holding up a crown but she's holding up Arminius's head. And now this scares the Roman soldiers away and they just take off and are defeated. So this scene is very important not only for the beginning of the video but for the aspect of the Black Madonna uh, which I want to point out a bit later. But first I want to go through the scenes that feature Germania. So the historical events are not shown in proper sequence but it doesn't matter. So it's kind of like uh, cutting back and forth between all these scenes and uh, of course they're all connected through Germania. So this one, we can see her as Josephine Baker and we have this kind of like Leninesque referee and she is just watching Flavus and Arminius, the two brothers, fight. And then we see her as a Nazi, as a guard. Interesting, she got the eye patch and she's got it on the right eye. So she's blind for the right, basically. So she does not see the crimes of the right wing of the Nazis in this case. And now here, she's a Politburo member and she's just wearing this kind of like GDR attire, this typically communist uniform. And then, this is very interesting, she becomes a nurturing mother. She's lying there and people are feasting on her. So they are feasting on her body. It looks like monks and they're basically consuming her. So she's the nurturing mother, which is also very important and I'm going to come back to this later on. And then we have her as a knight, as like a warrior. And then there is the nativity scene and she's giving birth. We can see she has a halo and she looks like a Virgin Mary-like character. Uh, funny thing is she is giving birth to dogs. So this is also very significant for the whole video. And this is very, very important. So she appears like an angel-like figure. And now the band Rammstein, they're just basically kneeling in front of her in a dog-like pose. And I will come back to this image later on because it ties in with a black Madonna imagery. And here she is again, just looking very belligerent and she is walking German Shepherds. This is also very important and I will point it out later. This one, of course, she's taking Arminius's head on a journey through German history and she always has his head with her. Like here in the end, that's again kind of like a retake on this image of Germania on the throne not holding a crown and a sword, but holding Arminius's severed head and a sword in her hand. So Germania is not really accurately depicted in Rammstein's Deutschland. She is a totally made-up character in this case. Now, she appears like kind of a divine figure with destructive powers. So in a way, she is divine. She is benign, like a holy mother of God. But she's also a destructive element. 
She seems to bring chaos and destruction wherever she goes. And the thing is, she is the principle, the element that shapes German history. And we all know that German history is a pretty violent history. So it's wars and wars and wars, it's misery, it's destruction, it's tragedy. So the Germania is a very ambiguous figure because she's oscillating between these two elements of destruction and construction, of being benign and being malign, of bringing peace and bringing war, bringing stability, bringing chaos. And now this ties in with the Black Madonna motif. Germania is the killer of Armenians, and this does not seem to make any sense, because why would she kill the German hero, the Germanic hero who liberates Germany, which of course is Germania's territory, why would she kill him? She seems to work against Armenias and his cause. But she also defeats the Romans. And in order to understand her paradoxical role, we have to look at the ancient Indian goddess Kali. Now this is Kali, and we can see she is holding a lot of weapons in her many hands. And in one of the hands, she's holding a severed head. For those who are able to make a leap of faith, our black virgin in the West has much in common symbolically with the other great goddess figures of the world. In her subterranean darkness, she could be compared with the terrifying maw of death, Kali. The circus of wax dedicated to her at Moulin, Marsat, and elsewhere remind us that in our end is our beginning and vice versa. Of the Euroboric prison of Maya and Karma, the measure of whose round dance we must tread. She is also the ancient wisdom of Isis Mat, the secret of eternal life that is the gold at the end of the alchemical process, as well as the initial blackness. In short, she is the spirit of evolutionary consciousness that lies hidden in matter. But evolution rejects the closed circuit for the open spiral. New planets do swim into our ken, and things are not always as they have been. And so, Kali and the Black Madonna figure, which is represented also by German and Ramshan's video, have a lot in common. One thing they both have in common, in addition to their gender, is the fierceness and wildness has often gotten covered up or tamed by patriarchy. Kali in India has the same fierceness and reminds us that with creativity comes destruction. And the word Kali means black in the Hindi language. Thus, Kali is a Black Madonna of the East. So this Black Madonna motif and the connection to Germania will make more sense in a minute. So I'm going to first point out the characteristics of the Black Madonna. The Black Madonna is cosmic from the ancient story of a meteorite that struck the earth and birthed the original Black Madonna. To the story in Islam of the holy shrine made of black stone in Mecca, also thought out to have originated from a meteorite called the Kaaba that fell from the heavens, wherein a black Maryam, mother of Jesus, is carved. To the twelve stars representing the twelve signs of the zodiac, and therefore cosmic universality. Many are the stories that underscore the cosmic sense, the sense of the cosmic mother and the cosmic Mary, a companion to the cosmic Christ that the Black Madonna awakens us to. So here the focus is on the Black Madonna's more or less alien origin. She's not from this world, but came as a meteorite and hit the earth. Now, interestingly, there used to be a real worship of the Black Madonna, especially in Central Europe. And there are still places that worship the Black Madonna. The great age of the Black Virgin is the 12th century. But legends about her hark back to the dawn of Christianity, the dynasty of the Merovingians, and the age of Charlemagne. Like the sleepers of Ephesus, ideas go underground for a few centuries to re-emerge when times are more propitious. The idea that the meaning of life has to do with the projection and reintegration of the soul sketched in early Gnosticism. 12th century poetry and later alchemy was not made conscious until Jung. At the same time as he was beginning his research into Gnosticism, formulated his principle of the anima animus. The Christian Mary inherited the tradition of her powerful female predecessors, although she was gradually stripped of some of her powers, such as her dominion over life and death, her wisdom and her sexuality. Nevertheless, like other goddesses, she too may be considered part of a trinity, currently manifested in the Slavic folk figures Rosaika, Mother Moist Earth, and Baba Yaga. The first embodies the fertile young virgin, the second the nourishing mother, and the third the crone or old wise woman connected to death. So we can see all these roles that the Black Madonna plays. 
She's fertile. She's sexual. She's also holy. She's a sage. She's nurturing, but she also brings destruction when she has to. So it's a very ambivalent figure, a very diverse figure with many, many different contradicting traits of character. So in this case, the great mother plays a very important role. I've shown the image of Germania being feasted on by the Germans. So she's nourishing them. The thing is, the nourishing mother, the great mother is not only nourishing, but she's also devouring. So she plays this ambiguous role again. And this is what Erich Neumann has to say about it. The great mother not only spins human life, but also the fate of the world. It's darkness as well as its light. All the great mothers, Nath, Nated, and Isis, Alethea or Athena, Earth, Holda, Perkt, or Ixil, and even the witch in the fairy tales are spinners of destiny. So the Black Madonna, Germania, as the great mother, they are in charge of the fate of the world. They control it, they spin the fate, and they can make it go either direction. They can bring harmony and peace, prosperity, but also total destruction, chaos and misery. The image of the Madonna as a powerful leader and protectress was already present in medieval Slavic representation of the Mother of God, such as the 11th century inviolable wall of the Saint Sophia Cathedral in Kiev. The veneration of the Mother of God as an all-encompassing deity who dominates the earth and the universe is a worldwide phenomenon. This tradition generated in the ancient worship of the omnipotent Mother of all creation, death and regeneration was later manifested in figures such as the Mother Moist Earth, the Goddess Isis, and the Dark Madonna. And now we can make the connection to Isis, the ancient Egyptian goddess, who also shapes the Germania in Rammstein's video. And Isis is usually represented in a very significant way in art. In art, Isis is usually depicted as a black African queen goddess, spreading her wings of love. Often she is shown nursing the infant Horus on her lap, and herein lies the origin of the iconography of the Madonna and child. Even the scepter used by Isis is similar to that of the Black Virgins, as well as the colors of the capes and dresses many of the Madonnas wear. Isis's priests often offer her a ship, which is also a symbol of Aphrodite, all of which recall legends like that of Brunatella, of her mysterious arrival on a ship, like many other Black Madonnas. Isis is pretty often depicted with lions. They're either lying in front of her while she is sitting on a kind of throne, or they're next to her, like this. So we can see Isis is sitting there, and the lions are basically next to her. Um, it seems like she's sitting on those lions. So she's in control of that strong, powerful, and majestic animal. And here, she's in a chariot, and the lions seem to be pulling her, actually. It's four lions in front of her. She's basically in charge of controlling the lines, taking her wherever she wants to go. And this is Rammstein's Deutschland, Germania, with the dogs. You can just change the dogs into lines, probably. And this is also a very, very famous depiction of Isis, spreading her angel-like wings of love. And this is a very, very significant pose because it reappears in Deutschland, right here. So she's in the Isis pose, and her lions are basically the band members in front of her. They're kneeling, but they're also in this kind of dog-like pose. And she gave birth to these dogs in that nativity scene. So you can see this connection between the Black Madonna, German and Isis becomes quite obvious. So she is indeed a universal principle, a divine figure that can control the fate, not only of her lions, or in this case, the dogs, but also like the whole nation and basically the whole world. She is that powerful. Our ancient battered, much loved, little understood black virgins are a still living archetypal image that lies at the heart of our civilization and has a message for us. The feminine principle is not a theory, but real, and it has a will of its own, which we ignore at our peril. It is an independent principle and cannot be forced against its will to go anywhere or do anything without bringing retribution on the perpetrator. In the beginning, I mentioned the decapitation of Arminius and the connection to Kali, who basically goes against the patriarchal principle with that. So in this case, it's at Arminius's peril. 
So the feminine principle defeats the masculine principle and basically takes over and thereby shows that she's independent and cannot be controlled by anyone, not by Arminius, not by the Romans, by no one, because she is in charge. And there's another very significant parallel between the Black Madonna and Rammstein's Deutschland video. Now, in the Middle Ages, Central Europe was the hotspot of Black Madonna worship. There might be a possible Germanic influence on that cult that predates Christianity. Now, the vast majority of Black Madonna figures in Europe can be found in areas which, when the Roman Empire broke up, came under the control of the Aryan Burgundians and Visigoths. So basically, this is like a strong pagan influence that kind of made its way into early Catholicism and to this very day is still there. Now there's a monastery very close to Germany, which features a very famous Black Madonna statue. And interestingly, this statue is standing on top of a Catholic saint's severed head. It is the head of Saint Meinrad. The construction of the chapel of the Black Madonna within the larger church of the monastery at Einsiedeln, directly over Meinrad's cell and place of death, takes on a larger resonance and points not only to an event but to the alchemical process itself. The Black Madonna of Einsiedeln grew out of Meinrad's decision to live with the ravens, to pursue a deeper meaning in life, to go the way of the Negredo of the Finsterwald, to inhabit his own dark places. To say that one is longing for darkness is to say that one longs for transformation, for a darkness that brings balance, wholeness, integration, wisdom, insight, I now realize. For so long I didn't know what I meant when I said that, when I felt it, a longing for darkness. I remember standing in front of that statue of Kali at Varnasi and thinking of this Madonna at Einsiedeln. Now I find not only the Madonna, but the beginning of words to name that longing and desire. So this is the famous Madonna of Einsiedeln. Here she is. And you can see her face is black and the child she's holding is also black. And she's holding a sword in her hand too. Now we can of course say if she was holding something else in her hand, like a crown or probably a severed head, we would have a very interesting connection to the Rammstein video. So interestingly, I read something about why her face is black and uh, the child's face is also black. It said there that because of the smoke of the candles, the face slowly became black, which makes no sense because then basically the rest of her should also be black, I guess. So no, this is a true original black Madonna statue. So this is the black Madonna of Einsiedeln. So we can see there's all these different elements that bring the Black Madonna figure into Rammstein's video. We have the universal principle of destruction of order, and we also have like the ISIS connection, like a universal principle. We have the dogs, we have the lions, we have the angel wings. So these motifs are very, very obvious in the video. The problem is they are actually not limited to German culture because of their universality. But Rammstein makes this connection to the Black Madonna and to this mother godly principle and it just goes far beyond the mere German historical dimension. It makes it a universal kind of metaphor for human history itself. So Germania is the red thread that ties all the different scenes, the historical scenes of the video together. She represents a universal principle and Germania brings chaos and order, destruction and construction. The thing is Germania is not bound to one culture, but could emerge anywhere and have the same effect on the history of other places because she is a universal principle. In a way, she is the principle that drives the whole world. She controls the fate of the world. And so it doesn't matter in what kind of disguises she appears in the video because as the main driving force of the world, she always stays the same and she brings good things and she brings bad things if she has to. And sometimes she just goes dormant for a while. But her absence doesn't mean that she is not there anymore because she will always reappear from time to time. And again, she'll bring prosperity or misery, destruction, construction, chaos and order because she is in total control of the fate of the world. And just as in Rammstein's Deutschland video, Germania shall have the last word in this video as well. For I am the first and the last. I am the honored and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. I am the barren one. And many are her sons. I am the science that is incomprehensible. I am the utterance of my name. 
for I am the one who alone exists, and I have no one who will judge me. So that was Rammstein's Deutschland video and the Black Madonna. Now we know who Germania actually is. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time.